Okay, let's see how's the lighting here. I guess it's okay. Hey everybody, this is Darren. The date is Sunday, September 14th, 2020 at uh, 4.33 in the morning. How's everyone doing? Uh, I spent the weekend drawing. I didn't really make much money at my job. But uh, I still uh, I did some good work though in terms of uh, art, art basically. What I've done here basically is I've sketched out Luke Skywalker and this is based on uh, my favorite artist Drew Struzan's uh, style basically. Um, based on one of his sketches as well basically. It's an obscure find. But he, he, what he's done here is he's the un, he's basically the what I like about Drew Struzan's style is I don't understand really what he's doing. You know, like I don't understand his, I guess his philosophy or because when I when I do a sketch, basically I I shoot for um, to to reproduce the uh, reference photo as much as possible. But he has a very very broken sketchy style and just shapes and stuff like that. And basically, so I, what I've done is I've studied one of his sketches and I've emulated as best as possible. He does a, but what I, what he does is this is basically one of Juice Jusen's portraits pre-paint what he does. Drew, uh, Drew Susan is a man uh, who, done, who did all the uh, movie posters in the 1980s, your Star Wars, your um, Back to the Future, Adventures in Babysitting, Hellboy, um, Hook, uh, Taking Care of Business, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Dune. He's basically the best portrait artist in the world and the best movie portrait, movie portrait in history. But what he does here before he, he goes to paint, and I want to uh, point out that I've become very good at sketching portraits uh, via 10 years of uh, experience, but I'm definitely not on this guy's level, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, and I, I, okay, yeah, so my point is that I, I got good at sketching uh, uh, and developed my own style as well, but I'm not good at coloring. So basically, last month, the last month of my life, I've been studying coloring. How do you take one of your sketches? or one of my sketches, or in this case, a Drew Struzan sketch, which I've reproduced. This is this is actually an original here, uh, as you can see. Um, it's an original drawing, but it's based on one of his sketches. Um, it's on watercolor paper, 140 pound. Oh yeah, so basically, for about a month and, and change now, I've been, I've been trying to find the answers. How do I color one of my sketches to look like uh, a Drew Struzan, a Drew Struzan painting, or eventually my own style. But I'm studying from the master, basically. How do I do that? Because I'm actually scared to uh, take one of my originals and paint it, basically. Because I'm scared because I, I worked two, three hours on it, and I'm scared that if I apply the paint, then I'm going to ruin it. This has been a, a theme of mine, a theme in my life, dating back to 2008, for sure, for sure. So now, basically, what I've done is I said to myself. Sparing no expense, I'm going to spend a couple hours a day, and I'm just going to, whether it's going to be a photocopy of a drawing, a coloring book, whatever, I'm going to do color test until I crack that code and become a master, as I feel I've become a master at drawing uh, sketches. I want to become a master at coloring them, full render. It, uh, and, it, um, if Matt Bush is watching this video, Matt Bush is another, Matt Bush is another YouTuber who I... Uh, discovered in 2008 that started me on this journey and reminded me of artwork. I stumbled on one of his videos 2008 and that started me down a, a, a road of drawing one picture of my ex-girlfriend and then hundreds and hundreds of drawing later and it's 12 years later and here I am today. Um, if Matt Bush is watching this he'll, 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 know, he'll know what I mean when I say Drew Struzan is the master and we just look at his work and our, and our jaw drops to the floor basically. So basically what I've done here is I've, um, um, I've been, like I said, I've been doing color tests and um, the drawing, I guess I can show it to you guys here. The drawing is based off of, this is a photocopy of Drew's sketch here. So Drew's sketch basically, what I suspect, this has been, uh, it's on, how he's done this basically, it's probably one to one ratio, meaning it's probably the same size in real life. But what he's probably done here is he's probably taken an illustration board and gessoed it with gray because you can see the, the gesso, the texture of paint lines to, to prepare the surface of illustration board. Uh, and the reason why he does that is because 
if you make a mistake or it has something that has to be changed, you can erase it. But on a raw paper, you can erase it. But when there's a layer of paint over, you can go over and erase it again. And then he's drawn out uh, the sketch and then he's taken, I don't know what type of pencil, I'm assuming Prismacolor. And then this type of vibe. But he's a very, 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 very great style, basically. And so he's going to paint this after, basically. So what I've done is... Uh, I, oh yeah, so basically, yeah, so what, what I did basically in, in preparation for this, I have uh, photocopied his work onto, um, onto um, watercolor, uh, uh, watercolor paper, and uh, I basically did a test, like almost, imagine it's like, I, this is a coloring book. So I, 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 I printed out his sketch, and I painted it basically uh, to sort of to do a, a test without having to ruin an original, quote unquote. This is an original, but of course it's a copy of a, of a sketch, an existing sketch, so. But it is an original drawing, though. Um, so I wouldn't have to ruin originals, basically. So, uh, a, a lot of things I learned, though, when I, this is watercolor. A lot of things I learned, though, I had to do this a few times before I finally cracked the code of how to uh, use a, something that's come out of your printer as a coloring book. Um, First of all, uh, watercolor chemically reacts with the printer ink, and it basically disrupts it. So that was, you know, it made for an interesting look, but it makes uh, the framework all sort of bleed and and just not be present anymore. So I had to be very careful doing this. But I finally, after doing three or four of these, I finally got a good little demo, and I, I mean to recreate this color scheme on the original as best I can. As I say, this is all for learning. This is all for my education. My all, I'm seeking education. Hold on a second. Yeah. Um, but of course, it's not going to be anything like this in the end because, as I say, this this uh, print on 140 pound um, watercolor paper is is uh, is completely different chemically than this because there's a film of of um, of uh, printer ink on it, which is disturbed and are chemically reacted when the watercolor hits it. So it's going to look different, but it'll be, but it's a it's a good it's a good starting point. It's a good road map and was a good education for me to see. So let's get started, anyways. But anyways, that's my intention. I just want to learn from the masters, and I just want to test without pressure, without having to worry and oh, I screwed up an original, blah 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 blah. So let's get started here. Hold on, let me get some uh, paint brushes here. So, so what I'm working with here basically is, work, first of all, I'm working with my coffee, here, right here. And, and the good thing about coffee, here, I'll show you a little trick here. I don't think about coffee is, coffee is almost like a watercolor. I learned this about 10 years ago. Um, example. You can have like sort of your coffee ring, you know, like, I know, like I know back in the, like, you know, say a, a um, Mozart or whatever, you can see probably Water, uh, you could see coffee stains on the original um, compositions, I think, you know, I don't know that for a fact, but anyways, I, I, I learned this little trick of, a, well, I, I stumbled on that 10 years ago, but we have our, we're working with our watercolor palette from the, from the uh, art store, it's high quality watercolor, and this one as well, this was a $6 kit, I've been using this a lot, we have our water, we have our heat gun, right here, to, oh shit, there's my keyboard. So we have our heat gun. Actually, what I what I did tonight is basically there was the heat gun. It gets very hot and you'll burn you'll burn the shit out of your hand. But there was like a plastic sheath over the um, the trigger, and I actually sliced it off with a razor blade because it was almost like solid plastic. I mean, you kill your finger just trying to turn it on. But yeah, so in between coats, you know. Oh, yeah, and it's to be noted too as well. Hold on, I don't know if. I camera's going to shut off soon because the camera has a 10 minute time limit. But I've actually, just to show you how, how committed I am to the idea, these are all, all original drawings too, basically, just basically reproduced his sketch. I did it, I did this tonight, I did this um, about 6 p.m. and then I redid it again, but then I airbrushed uh, start, I was going to do a star field. And then I did it again, and keep in mind I drew this thing three times, this is not out of a printer. These are all drawn drawings. Uh, and then I did the um, Starscape, but of course, it, it looks okay, but it's not, 
you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's sloppy and it was lazy and I did it fast and I didn't put much care into it. But again, it was just a color test. They're all just color tests, you know? Um, I really, really enjoy this stuff, people. I really, really like, you know, but one of the torments I have in my life is just screwing up a drawing, screwing it up and then it has to be tossed in the garbage can. But we're going to get over that. We're, as I say, we're, we're, we have no pressure now. You, as you can see here as well, I did even more tests on this particular drawing here, see? This was a, uh, when I ran it to the printer, and then I, I airbrushed, I airbrushed watercolor tint on the, on the, on the, on a vertical. I put it on the wall and I airbrushed tinted, I started trying to tint skin tone on there, but you could see it disrupted the ink. It started chemically reacting with the, with the computer, uh, um, printer ink and screwed it up. So I, I knew, I, I said, oh, shit, I really have to draw it next time. But before that even, and then before that the day I did a uh, color test on the Obi-Wan here, I don't know if you can see that, but I don't know, I just really, really enjoy this guy's work here. Oh yeah, as you can see, yeah. Uh, I guess you couldn't see that before, but uh, yeah, um, yeah, how it chemically reacts. So I'm looking at the camera now, but um, maybe, I don't know, I'll show you these things again here, I don't know if you can see them. I had, um, can you see that? Yeah, I did this, I didn't know if you could see it before, hold on. I gotta get rid of this water here. I'm really kind of on a time limit here with the camera. The camera shuts off after 10 minutes. Um, but I will. That will be changing in the near future because I plan to put way more effort into my uh, art channel. But one thing at a time, basically. Here, hold on. Can you see that there? Yeah. yeah. I guess it looks okay. But again, this is an original drawing. Well, an original based off his sketch, but it's been drawn by me. And then uh, earlier in the day, I did this one, and then I did it again, and then I airbrushed black Starfield with the intention of doing a test like this later, which I did. Which it's not a fail, but these are all going into the storage, into uh, into storage now. These are done basically. And the reason why I'm leaving them as is is because I, I want to see in the future the stages that I did to get there basically. Hold, let me shut the camera off and we're gonna do another, oh look at this. I got my window open and a moth has fallen into my coffin. So yeah, the camera just shut off. Yeah, look at this, my window is open. Uh, winter's, um, summer's turning into fall, but look at that, a, a moth has fallen into my coffee. So we can't drink this coffee anymore, which sucks because I was really looking forward to that. So we're gonna start up the uh, watercolor. So we have basically, but I really kind of like that. This is a really nice. It's too bad this wasn't an original, you know? Like, I can't present this as a Darren Beatman original because it is based on Drew's work. It is a color test, but it really turned out nice as far as I'm concerned. And the blue background here from the printer is really nice as well. It's just too bad. But, anyways, it's a color test and it was a work. We learned. We learned, people. So, we're going to put it over here in front of us. And then we're going to start basically with the watercolor. And can we see here? Hold on. Hold on, let me see the camera. And uh, I'm getting good at editing and stuff like that, um, people. So, um, like splicing the, the videos together. So, um, it, it'll get better as time um, goes on. Okay. So, just me, just the camera here. And uh, let me start. I'm just looking through the camera lens. I got my water here. It's in front of me. Okay. So let's start on um let's start on the on the uh, star field. Okay, so we're gonna what we're gonna do is we got our we have our uh, straw here. And what we do to create this sort of splatter effect is we blow on the water, and then there's a few layers here. As you can see, like there's um, different like the one layer, two layer, three layers. Um, we blow dry the we or we uh, heat gun the in between layers. To speed up the to speed up the process, so we, we take our water here, we dip it in the we're gonna dip it. This is watercolor. We dip our water in here, and then we we take our uh, watercolor tray. And I'm sacrificing this drawing is for the video as well. So if I screw it up, it's fine. It's just it's all for education. We dip it. We get a little muddy color here. And as I say, oh, you know what? For my own. Oh, sorry. And um. The thing about watercolor, what, as I say, I've only been doing watercolor for a very short amount of time now, but it's very, very kind of user friendly. Hold on, I need some. Uh, 
I needed some uh, napkins, but I actually don't have any. I'm gonna have to go get some from the gas station. A good way to get gas, uh, a good way to get napkins, guys, free napkins, is you go to the gas station, you load up on gas, and then you get uh, the napkins from the garbage there. You know the brown ones there. So let's. Uh, we're starting here, and this uh, uh, this is gonna be the first layer of um, of sky background here. Um, I, like, as I say, I'm new to this as well, people. So. It's all new to me, and it's just a wonderment, too. I mean, I'm basically like a kid. If it wasn't for my suspected herniated disc making my left foot numb, I'd be a kid in a candy shop. So now we, because um, it gives me extreme pain. Now what we do is we, we're going to make that, we take the straw and we blow. Yeah, see how awesome that is? You know? It's just so amazing. And then what we'll do is we'll, here, hold, let me see the camera's still recording. Yeah, I'm going to... We're going to blow dry that. We're going to make it dry so we can do the second layer much more quick. Look how nice that is. Isn't that unbelievably nice? Um, I am going to basically pre present this video um, without editing it. Despite the narration being poor, um, I'm going to be doing more voiceovers in the future because I get to say more interesting things, but I'm going to keep this one as is so we can see this all in real time. So there's two two settings to the heat gun. You can do this with a hair dryer too, but the heat gun is way way. I mean, you'll burnish your hand like crazy. Actually, another kind of interesting thing I discovered with the heat gun is if you put it close to the paper, it starts to cook the paper, and it makes it brown. And uh, I learned that by accident. Of course, my, my, as my mother pointed out, you're probably just the paper's probably going to fall apart in the future if you do that, if you burn it, but it's been my experience that paper lasts a very, very, very long time, basically. And it gives it that sort of um, uh, pirate treasure map look. But I have drawings from like, well I don't have very many, but I have a drawing that I did when I was 15. Uh, no, I don't have it anymore. Uh, but I have scraps of paper. From, from like say 14, 15 years old, which is like 30, 30, 30 plus years ago, and they, they look identical. So paper lasts a very, very long time. But my mother had a good point there, and I, I said, You're right. you, you might have a point there, Mom. Oh, let's put a little, let's get a little red in there. I'll make a little purple, so you can see, for the second layer. Oh, that is just beautiful. Uh, and then we, oh, look at that in the second layer. And it sort of gives it like a sort of, a, an epic sort of universe out into the universe look, you know? And I really, and let's, um, it's warping the paper, but no matter because you, uh, me, Darren Beadman, I am an expert at mounting these, well, <laughs> I'm an expert at mounting, I'm an expert at mounting warp paper onto illustration board, gluing them to make them flat again for framing, because I'm an expert at framing too, by the way, but well, that's another story. Oh, look at that, isn't that just wonderful? And then we'll just dab off the excess here in the in the hair. Oh, and giving it a uh, giving it giving it an interesting look. And then we'll, you know, what we'll do, we'll take a bit of the, and we'll we'll do little dots. We'll, we'll mop up a bit of the watercolor, and we'll do little dots already, already looking. Look how look how amazing that is, people. And then we'll take it off his face. Okay, but it doesn't really matter. And then you know what we'll do? We'll we'll dry this layer as well. But 